Good morning, church. So nice to, I guess, virtually see you all, uh, spend this time with you. I love doing this every week. Um, I kind of want to start off with, you know, if, if there's any of you who feel led to share something inspiring or some a word of God that you feel like is on your heart, please don't hesitate to reach out to one of us and let us know. I mean, we're not that greedy. We'll give up our day um, <clears throat> because this is kind of a group effort to uh, just try to stay involved with you guys. So again, if if you if something's on your heart and you want to share it, uh, please reach out. Let us know because we we like to be fed too. Um, I love you all. I miss you guys. Things are going great for us and the family. You know, we're just taking it one day at a time. We are reprioritizing. Um, and it's just it's just a nice time, you know, through all this devastation and changes. And, you know, this is the new normal. And it's, it's just nice to kind of put our thoughts and um, <clears throat> our insights and, and, and what we're doing here in order and just able to spend more time with God and our families has just been so reassuring for my faith and um, I'm just so thankful for it. So I got up a little earlier this morning so I could get through this before the household gets to moving. Some of them are already moving so if you see them in the background just overlook them. Um, I'm going to grab a Kleenex. It's been kind of an emotional week. And y'all know I'm very emotional anyways. So um, uh, something that's been on my heart, <clears throat> it's been on my heart for a long time. If any, you all know myself and my family, my sisters, and um, I like to think we're all leaders. We've always been like that. We're go-getters. We've never really been a follower. We've always kind of done our own thing. Um, but now that we're older and wiser and children of God and faithful, and we trust him and the plans that he has for us. We're kind of better leaders, I would like to say. Um, back in the day, we were probably the cool leaders. Somehow, I do not know. But now we are, um, we just want to spread God's love and share it with others, especially kids. You know, that's kind of our forte. <clears throat> I think we might be a little bit cool to them. So um, today we're going to talk about leadership. And I have actually written my Bible verses down. And I have studied this lesson throughout the week because I just kind of wanted to get it just right. But I'll read my notes so that I don't drag this out too long, okay? So leadership, basically, leadership does not mean um, that you are way up on the list in some form of, like, <clears throat> you have a job title or a business car that does not make you a leader. Um, a leader is someone who leads. If you're a parent, you're a leader, Okay, if you are someone who interacts with others at work, at church, at school, or anywhere people may gather for a purpose, you are a leader. Okay, if basically your life creates an impact on somebody. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're young or if you're older, you are making an impact on someone who is watching. Okay, and this is why it's important as we study God's word and we learn his word that should, we shouldn't just look for things that speak to us and move just to us. But we need to look at things that may be a good direction or good advice, okay, or a leadership that may inspire others. You don't want to just tell people what is right, how to do it. You want to show them, okay? So there's one awesome example in the Bible that I'd like to share with you today, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with King Solomon. So the first verse I'm going to read is... 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 3. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him, all of the assembly, all of Israel, went to the high place that was Gibeon. I hope I said that right. For the tabernacle of meeting with God was there, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. Okay? So all these people went with Solomon. They followed him. He was their leader. Okay? So as 
he was the king. He was a leader of all leaders. He gave them standards on how they should operate. Um, he he spoke to all of Israel. He reached out to commanders of thousands and hundreds and to every leader in Israel. We read that in verse 2, the previous verse. So he was reaching out to all the important people, all the leaders, I mean, every bit of Israel. So they went up to Gibeon to make burnt offerings for the Lord. He did not point the way. He did not tell them, hey, go up the hill, go up there, do your thing. He didn't do that. He led them. He went in front of them, okay? He was the leader. He was the most powerful king, and he had the most wits. He was granted this because he was so humble. He had the most wisdom, the most knowledge, and on top of all that, he had all the luxuries anyone could ask for. He was king. He, he led them. He was their leader. So he didn't just point the way. He led them. He took them there. He stood with them. And if you notice, a lot of times there's, there's leaders all around us. Um, I observe leaders all the time. And like this week, at we actually painted at the berry patch this week. And it was just nice to see Lee and Amy as leaders, you know, they didn't just come in and say, hey, this is what we're doing today. Let me know how it goes and roll out like they probably could. Mm -hmm. You know, they were there. They spent time there. They stayed there all day. Um, Amy gets right. I know you guys go to the berry patch all the time and you see Lee interacting with all his customers, interacting with his workers. But you see Amy back there, she's either on the produce side or the ice cream side, and she's working just as hard, if not harder, than her workers are. You know, that's a leader. Um, when someone new comes in to our line of work, um, when we train them, we don't just say, hey, go sand those walls or go caulk that. We show them. We get in there with them. There's been times where I went to work earlier to do all the sanding so that any of my people don't think that I'm above them and I don't have to sand anymore. Although I do take that way sometimes. I may leave and go get paint while they're sanding. But overall, I try to get in there with them. You got to be a good leader. Don't just point your finger. Don't just tell people what you think they should do. Don't just sit around and think, well, we need to do this and we need to do that. Jump in there. Show them. Don't be afraid to help out. So, now I want to read John 3, 14, okay? And this is what I mean by being a leader. And it doesn't get any more powerful than this. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. That's John 13, 14. And um, we all know about Jesus washing their feet. And <laughs> Jesus washing feet. I mean, come on. So, he once said, um, well, never mind, I apologize for that. So, leadership is never measured by what you say as much as the direction you go. So, the example you're setting, is it worth imitating? Is it worth someone else, you know, going by your example? The path you're on. Is it a good one to follow? Would you want your child to go down the same road that you've gone down? I mean, obviously they're going to go down their own road, but at the end of the road, would you want your child to go down that same road or someone else that's watching? These are important questions because the patterns that we set and the character that we form will become a pathway that others will walk because we are leaders in some way, shape, or form. You are a leader. Someone is watching you. Youth. If you have younger sisters, younger brothers, they want to be like you. Parents, if you have children, they're watching you. They want to be like you. So this is so important, okay? So now we're going to read Philippians 4, 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, do these things, and to God of peace will be with you. In other words, you can sleep a little better at night, and have a little more peaceful rest if you know that you're setting a good example for your kids. So what your children see in you, they register and they remember. What others see are patterns in your life. They store them eternally and they file them away. It's always going to be there. It is so important to 
Pay attention to the decisions that you make and the words that you speak and the little arguments that you involve yourself in. It's important, okay? People are watching you always. They store them eternally and they file them away. That means they're sitting in a file cabinet somewhere and at any time they want, they can pick through and they could go to those. So let's be good leaders. Don't just tell people what you think is right or what you want to do. I want you to show them Colossians 1 verse 10 that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in knowledge of God. Our numbers are going down on our views for church service, um, for our Zoom class on Wednesday, Bible study. And although we're not YouTube stars or um, TikTok queens or, you know, all those awesome things that people think are awesome, you know, it kind of concerns us because, you know, we're not looking for as many views as we can get. We're looking to reach out to our church people. and we have less views, that means, you know, that means there's less of you that are letting God work in your heart or, or, um, and, and you may not even be interested in what we're saying and that's okay. I understand that. But as a church, as a whole, it's important for us to stay united, to be involved together. Okay. And I know this is hard, especially right now, but you have to discipline yourself. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong. It's pretty nice to get up and watch Sunday school and church service in your pajamas or leggings or take a quick shower and sit down and eat your breakfast while you study God's word. It's pretty convenient, but we have to discipline ourselves because at some point we're going back to church, people. We're going to be gathering again, and it's going to be tough to get up, get your stuff together, especially for myself because I got the journey back to LRB. And um, so I try to discipline myself. I want to be here. I want to see you guys. I want to hear from you. I want your feedback. I want you to be involved. I want you to feed me. Um, so don't just say, you know, I watched a little bit of this. I watched that. Get in there. Be a leader for your family. Let's watch church together. Let's do this together. Let's do Bible study on Wednesday nights together. Let's do Zoom youth together. Let's all be together because at some point we will be back together in the room together. And it's going to be hard when some of us have missed a half a year because we just didn't feel like doing it. Okay. So Timothy... 1 Timothy 4.12 Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Um, I think it was Parker and Ivy who had to memorize this verse. It was one of many, and Tatum, and Gracie, actually. I have four memorized, like, so many verses. I don't know why they would ever choose that project, but this was actually in there. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. We have all been gifted by God for a purpose. Once he saved us, he gave us a reason to live, okay? There's a reason we were saved. Stir up that gift that he has put inside of you, okay? Use it, nurture it, and thank him for it. You will see growth and you will see progress, constant ministry that flows in and out through your life and into others' pathways, okay? So um, it's just really important for us right now to be good leaders and... Uh, be there for one another and be a good example. And if we're home, sisters, brothers, let your little sister or brother or big sister or brother watch youth or Zoom with you. Wednesday night Bible study, tell your friends about it. Get involved, watch it. It's good stuff. Kenley sings, Larry sings. They have a short Bible study. It's just Sunday morning, you know, especially that singing and, and that worship service, if, if you can really put your mindset to it, get in there, watch it, discipline yourself, make your family watch it with you because we're going back to church. We need to get back in that groove. Um, be a leader. Be an example. What do you want your kids to do? What do you want your brother to do? What do you want your sister to do? Is it going to be a good example? 
Um, I just want to thank you all for this time. I hope I haven't been too bossy. Um, it's been a tough week for us. You know, Ishmael passing away, I, I can't help but think about the glory fest in heaven right now, how amazing heaven must be with him there. And just knowing that he is watching over us and he's there to probably protect us. And um, the way Ishmael always prays for us is so powerful. I just can't imagine how powerful heaven is with him there. We have lost such a good friend and pastor and leader. What a leader he is. And um, I know in my heart that Ishmael has created other leaders and his wife, Karen, you know, she's been there with him from day one. So um, the orphanage and she and his family and children, his four kids, you know, they are hurting right now. Uh, but on top of it all, I try to keep in touch with them and they're just so faithful. They have so much faith in God. They are so, um, they're just praising him. They, they know Ishmael's in heaven, but I know that they're hurt and I know that they're scared and, um, please keep them in your prayers big time, especially the orphanage, because, you know, Ishmael started this back in 1998, 97, and, and they started out of their home, and then they rented two apartments, and then they bought this land, and then they started this building, and this has been an ongoing process for so many years. It took him over seven years to get that <laughs> building up, and then he got a van. Um, I feel in my heart that he was not successful in making all this happen with the help of God and us supporting him and other churches and people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel like all this happened and now Ishmael has left us and then here it sits. Okay, I feel like now more than ever they're going to need our support and our prayers. Number one, the first thing Ishmael has ever asked us for was never money. It was always prayers. Please pray for us. That's all he ever asked for. So um, let's pray for them. Let's pray for that orphanage. Let's pray really hard that all, you know, that they're able to take the next steps that they can and have faith in God. There's so many prayer requests out there I know, Lord. Uh, you guys, I just... Let's just pray together, and then I'm going to let you go, okay? So, Father, thank you so much for this time that you allowed me to have with my church people, Lord, and anyone else watching, God. I pray that they got the message, Lord. I pray that they received it, Lord, and they'll apply it to their life, God, Lord. I thank you for giving me some kind of leadership, Lord. I pray that you please help me to be smart, Lord, and follow the path that you've made for me, God, and not the path that I like to make for myself sometimes, God, Lord. Um, I am so unworthy of the ways that you bless me and my family over and over and over, Lord, especially when we don't deserve it, God, Lord. I love you, Lord. I pray that you please be with our church, Lord. Please be with our church and their family, Lord, and our youth, God, Lord. Refreshing them, Lord. Give them the strength that they need, Lord, to get out there and be a leader, God, Lord. Lord, please be with Ishmael's family, Lord, his wife, Karen, and their children, Lord, and the orphanage, God, Lord. Keep your hands on them, Lord, as I know your hands have been on them for a long time, Lord. I pray that they feel your presence, Lord. They continue to feel your faith, Lord, and they trust you, God, Lord. And I know that when one door closes, you've always got another door open, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much that it is Friday and we get to celebrate you throughout the weekend, God, Lord. And all these things we ask and pray, Lord. Amen. Bye, guys.